So the Samyang or Rokinon 14mm f2.8 lens has a reputation as one of the best and most affordable lenses for astrophotography. So I'll be looking at a couple of the factors including the price, specifications, the mechanical and build quality, the field of view, and the optical quality of this lens. So the lens is available for about $300 US or about $400 Canadian. The lens has a focal length of 14 millimeters. So it's a fairly wide field lens, especially on a full frame camera. But if you are using the lens on a crop sensor, so an APS-C sensor, then the focal length on it will be equivalent to about 21 or 22 millimeters depending on your camera and the aperture on this lens is f 2.8 which is quite fast uh, which is what makes it good for night photography or low light photography or videography now in terms of the mechanical quality of the lens uh, I find that the mechanical quality is actually quite good. It has a fully metal mount and the body itself is fully metal as well. The only part that is plastic on this lens is the lens hood itself. Um, and that's, that's pretty heavy duty plastic so I have no complaints about the actual uh, build quality of the lens. Um, and also the focus is quite smooth. The aperture turns quite well. It does have a click every time it turns, so um, you don't always have to look at the lens to figure out what your aperture is. You can just do it using uh, audio. Uh, now, one complaint I did have about the lens is that at least on my copy, the infinity symbol didn't line up with the actual uh, actual infinity. So if you're focusing on the stars at night, you want to focus at infinity but the infinity symbol here might not always line up with the symbol or the line. There are ways to adjust that on your copy if you need, but uh, you know, I recommend not going by the symbols or the markings on lenses anyways for astrophotography. The best option is always to focus on a bright star. And once you've done that, then you can be sure that, uh, that you are properly focused. Now, um, for this lens, since it is a very wide field lens, you're not gonna be able to use a Botinov mask just like any wide field lens. So the best way to focus, uh, depending on your camera, is to just find a bright star, zoom in, and then look at the LCD screen. So zoom in as far as you can. Usually most cameras offer a 10X zoom. And then look at the star on the L, uh, LCD uh, on the back, and then manually adjust the, uh, the focus ring until the star looks small and sharp and you might have to increase your ISO to do that so that you can properly see the star and afterwards you can bring your ISO back down to whatever setting you want to use. So uh, one other thing to know about this lens is that it is a fully manual lens so the focusing will be done fully manually and when you're setting the aperture uh, that is done fully manually as well. It won't have any contact with your camera so your camera won't know whether or not it's in focus or what the aperture is set to. So you'll have to do that manually but that's perfectly fine for astrophotography. We set the camera to manual mode and then uh, set the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO all manually for astrophotography anyways, and also the white balance. If you are using this lens on a newer camera, the camera does offer some manual focus assist tools such as focus peaking, so that would make it uh, a lot easier to focus this lens than if you are using it on an old camera such as my Canon 6D. In some cases, your camera might require you to go into settings and select shoot without a lens uh, because the camera, in some cases, if it doesn't detect a lens, doesn't allow you to take a picture. So since, since this is a manual lens, uh, you might have to do that if you get an error message when you connect the lens to your camera for the first time. Now the main part that you're probably interested in is how this lens performs optically for astrophotography. So I've included a Google Drive link in the description of this video and over there you can go and download all of the full resolution raw images that I took with my Canon 6D while testing this lens and uh, you can take a look at them for yourself but I'll go over a couple of the images uh, here. So. Let's take a look at the first image. Now this is one of the images I took uh, 
and near the mountains uh, in a parking lot and the sky was decent but there was a, a significant amount of haze in the atmosphere at the time however that should not affect the test now as you can see the image looks pretty good at the size of a regular monitor uh, but if we zoom in all the way to 100 percent you can see that the stars are pretty sharp in the center and there is no noticeable amount of chromatic aberration and of course this was tested wide open i like to test lenses for astrophotography wide open because there's no point in buying a uh, you know a fast lens and then stopping it down by a couple of stops to use for astrophotography that cuts your light down uh, by you know a huge factor so i do like to test them wide open and and it looks sharp. I have no complaints about the image quality in the center of this lens wide open at f2. Now if we look at the corners, uh, this is one of the corners. I'll zoom into 100% here. So this is the very top left corner of a full frame sensor on my Canon 6D. And as you can see, that actually looks uh, pretty decent. It, that's not bad at all for a lens in this price range for a full frame. And if you're looking at APS-C, that would come to uh, about right over here. And so uh, this lens would, would work perfectly fine on an APS-C. You wouldn't even notice any aberrations. But at the very edge of a full frame sensor, you do notice some amount of distortion some amount of coma uh, and a little bit of color dispersion as well uh, but that's not bad let's take a look at the top right corner again uh, those little bright dots are hot pixels so you can ignore those but what we are seeing here is some some coma in the top right corner as well but again uh, not objectionable when viewed at the size of a regular monitor and of course the bottom left and right are well it's mostly the ground so you wouldn't notice much distortion there the stars are a much tougher target but looking at the image as a whole for a lens in this price range that is very good performance and right over here you can see the big dipper so let's open up a different image this is another image and again if we zoom into 100% Center looks perfect, no uh, complaints at all about the quality of stars at the center wide open. At the top left, again, you're noticing some of the same distortions. Same with the top right. But uh, yeah, they're nowhere near as bad as I've seen uh, on plenty of lenses that were much more expensive. So this would be a completely usable image at regular monitor sizes, so no complaints there. Let's take a look at the full sky now. Now here is the image of the full sky, and let's zoom into the center. Again, stars are pretty good. Focus was not perfect in this case, uh, but that was that's close enough. Now if we look at the top left, Again, we're noticing a little bit of chromatic aberration maybe uh, and some, some coma in the very edges. Same with the type, uh, top right corner and bottom right corner. Yeah, about the same type of coma. Little bit of color dispersion as well. Same with the bottom, uh, bottom uh, left corner. So overall, the distortions in the very edges of a full frame sensor are quite uniform, which is good to see. Sometimes you have one corner that's way worse than others uh, in, uh, in some lenses, which indicates that there is some amount of decentering in the lens elements, but that is not a problem here. And also you will notice some darkening at the very edges of a full frame sensor. And uh, this is just vignetting, but this amount would be fully correctable uh, using flat frames. So again, that's not a problem at all. And uh, you can see the Milky Way going through the center here, but the full moon was up at the time. So uh, of course you can't see the Milky Way very well, but you can get a good idea of what the star quality would look like with this lens. So again, very nice, very sharp lens. And I'm uh, quite surprised by the performance of this price range. So overall, this is still one of the best lenses available for wide field astrophotography. For one thing, the price is very attractive at between three and four hundred dollars. It captures a lot of light because of the fast aperture. So you can image without a tracking mount. You can image using a regular photo tripod if you like. 
also it is mechanically quite well built uh, and most importantly it performs pretty well optically even on a full frame sensor. Now the downside of buying one of these lenses is that uh, Rokinon or Samyang have fairly poor quality control so your chances of getting a lens that is optically or mechanically subpar are fairly high. In some cases the lenses do not focus to infinity. In many cases the actual markings over here are not going to align with actual infinity and in cases where it doesn't focus to infinity uh, then you will have to move this rubber back and adjust the screws underneath to get it to actually be able to focus to infinity or you might have to exchange the lens for one that works perfectly. But if you are willing to take that chance you may be able to get a really good lens at a really good price. So overall I would give this lens a 7 for the mechanical construction and I would give it an 8 out of 10 for optics and I would give it a 5 out of 10 for quality control. So overall, still probably the best option available in this price range uh, between three and $400 uh, for wide angle astrophotography. Um, so I will also be reviewing the version two of this lens that Rock Rokin on. Uh, just released. It does have some, some mechanical advantages over the current version but optically it should be the same. So consider subscribing to the channel if you want to be notified when that video is uploaded. Again thank you very much for watching and clear skies.